Good morning, everyone. It's Greg Finn, Camel River Guide Service, and welcome to another edition of Camel River Fishing. I'm just taking a death. You can be out here with me. This is about the middle of March, and guess what? The pollen off the pine trees are falling. They're all over the boat and the trailer and the, and the truck and even on top of the surface of the water. So I'm excited because what that means is that these crappies should be moving into shallow water. So today we're going to go see if we can find these crappie that are setting up the spawn. So sit back, enjoy the show. This is Greg Finn, and this is Camera River Guide Service. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try this morning is I'm going to go shallow. I'm going to, I'll show you how I'm going to rig up my, my jig in just a moment. But first things first, we have to select the appropriate place. Now what I'm looking for is uh, a place where I can get fairly close to the bank. No matter what boat you have here, I'm in a 24 foot pontoon. But I want to be able to pitch a jig up fairly close to that 18 inch, two foot, three foot water uh, rather easily. I don't want to have buck brush that's 50 yards from the bank. I want to be able to be able to get to the bank a little quicker. So I want to show you as I pan around here, for example, you see these small trees over here? That's probably, and, and you can see where it's flood, the water is flooded all back in there. Well, that might not be that great of a place. What I'm looking for is big trees on a bank like this right here. That tells you, and, and, and where a bank comes down very quickly, that tells you that's a place where I can get up in pretty good. Now notice how it kind of thins out and then the trees come up higher over here. You see that? Now contrast this with this other side of the cove. Now I've been over there already, but I can already tell by the trees that are a little bit lower and they're further set back on the bank that that's a long way from the actual bank. I want to get, be able to get to the bank as closely as possible. So I'm going to select this area right through here because the trees are real high. It appears that uh, I can actually see the bank from here and I think that's gonna be a perfect spot. The other thing I want you to look at is my graph. Now here I am sitting right here, and what I just showed you is, is uh, on the other side over there, you notice how these lines, can you see that? How they're kind of far apart? Those are contour lines. For example, right here, you'll notice that it's a long way from the bank. It's not, it's a very subtle drop off, which means you're not gonna be able to get very close to the bank. But I'm sitting right here. Now look right over here where I just showed you those tall trees. You see how the contour lines comes very, very close to the bank, can you see that? That's what I'm looking for. Here's another little area right here that comes really close to the bank. If the trees here are high, way up in the air, that tells me that the bank comes down quicker and that the lines are closer together. That means I'm more than likely, that's an area I need to go check out because I'm going to be able to get closer to the bank where the crappie are. So that's the first thing that I do in preparation for where I want to go instead of just wasting a whole lot of time. <clears throat> Now let's talk a little bit about my technique today. I'm going to use uh, my regular 7 foot B&M super sensitive rod, same 20 pound braid that I normally use. This water is off color and uh, it's not clear. And so in my opinion, I need something with, with a little bit more white in it. So I'm going to, today I'm going to use this pink head jig I always do. This is a 1 8 pink head jig. It's blue, the top part of it, but notice the bottom of it is white. Now I've got a couple, if I can find them right here, I've got a couple of other jigs that I'm going to try. Uh, that's the 
that's the blue and white on my slab buster jigs that's the blue and white and that says pearl blue pearl white I need some white in this color for those crappie to see it very quickly I also like this color here that I'm gonna try slab buster this is called bone white uh, chartreuse uh, silver now that this is the tail if you turn the back of it here you'll see that's a real bright almost refrigerator white but the tail is chartreuse I think these are two excellent choices for where I'm going to fish today so I'm going to use those now how am I going to present it to them well I'm going to use a, a what I call a popping cork method but now all I'm doing is I have a one and a half inch um, float now this float here and it doesn't matter how you I've actually I put it on backwards but I don't care whatever helps you see it better I may turn it around but this float here has a split do you see it split down the side I like that because I can take it on and off and of course either way you can slide it up and down but if I don't want the float on I can just simply take it off which I will do uh, perhaps a little bit later if I want to check some brush piles out I'll take that float off put a little uh, 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 little uh, weight up here above it to weight it down just a little bit a little split shot and then I'm right back to fishing my brush piles like you and I have done before now I'm going to be fishing about two and a half to three foot of water so you can see here I haven't got I've only got this set about 24 inches and my method is to pitch it out very carefully without getting hung up pitch it out and let it sit and then pop it just real slow ever so often another pop it back and we'll see if we can't catch some fish and uh, if, if those if these crappie have moved up in shy water uh, here at the middle of March we're gonna catch some fish so stay tuned let's see how we do so what I do is I normally like to use a swinging method and uh, that way you get plenty of line and I'm going to just swing it right over there I kind of get my angle and then let her go and we'll just let it sit sit in there just for a second and let's see if we get a bite I'll hold it right there oh there there's one right there look here first first cast folks first cast first cast isn't that something? Those fish were in there. My planning paid off. Look at that. How about that, folks? First time. Nice little male crappie right there. I'm going to release him. Right back in the same spot. There he is. He hit just as soon as it went down. He was waiting on it. Look at that. Boy, this is fun. Springtime crappie fishing on Lake Sam River. Look at here, folks. That's a nice fish right there. Still another male, though. I can tell these are males. They're not the big females so far. Those are males. Now, what does a male do? A male comes in and builds that best for, uh, bed for the females. So right now, we're just pulling off males. There's another one. All right. The small male, that's the third male. So here's the deal. Here's what I figured out. I caught about five there and I missed two more. Um, not only is there not any very many numbers up there in that shallow water just as yet but every one of those were males so what does that tell you it tells you that these females i would expect are out here anywhere from seven six or seven all the way to 15 feet deep so now here's where i get my garmin pan optics if i can see it in this dirty water i'm on the north end of rayburn today if i can see well enough to see whether or not there's there's a uh, fish on these on structure. I'm looking for six to 15 feet of water. If I find structure, let's take a good look at it. I'll take the cork off, put my split shot back on, takes less than 30 seconds, and I'm ready to go 
for some good straight line fishing. So let's see how we do. But what I got right here, you can tell, is a tall tree. Now, it, I'm in uh, this is about 18 foot of water. But notice, I see some crappie hanging real tight to that tree in the 10, uh, about 11 or 12 foot range right there. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit more. And the boat's kind of moving around. I'm out here in the wind. But I know those are crappie. Not a lot of them, but I'm going to see if I can't catch them. There he is. There he is. Oh, let's see what I got here. Another smaller one. Well, he ain't real small. He's a keeper. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a mess of them. That's a nice little black right there. Just probably about 11 inch fish. Not very big. Turn him loose. Using this uh, blue pearl, I think it's better in this uh, dingy water. Let's try it again. There's some fish down there. Uh, I was thinking there'd be big females out here, but the fact that there's females and males out here means this spawn hasn't really taken off good yet. We had a lot of rain last uh, yesterday evening, right about dark, and it cooled things down. Now let me look over here and I'll tell you what the water temperature is. I see I'm reading right now, but this is this this hasn't been like this very long. I'm reading 69.2. Those fish ought to be on the bank, but um, for some reason or another, they've you know. Even though the temperature is warm, this rain and so on and so forth has, has pulled them back. But we'll see if we can't catch some more. There he is. Oh, that's a better cropping. That, that's a little bit better, huh? Let's see what we got here. How about that? The fish I just showed you on that tree, there was two of them on top of that. In fact, there's still another one there. The fish I just showed you, I put down there. That fish right there is six feet underneath the water. But he's on a tree that's 18 feet deep in deep water. That's a nice three quarter pound, maybe a pound. That's close to a pound crappie. Maybe a pound, a little bit more. That's a good, nice crappie right there. I'm going to release him. We can catch him. Just got to be a little bit more patient. It's not like my brush piles out there was just one after another after another. These fish are here. We can catch them. Got to be patient. Got to be still. Got to be quiet. Let's see if we can't catch another one right here. I want you to look at these crappie on top of this tree right here. You see all them? Now, as I, now look, this is right. Here's the land going up, and, and right over there is where they're going to spawn. But right now, they're holding out. You can see them right here. They're right underneath me. Look at all these crappie. They're in about uh, 8 to 10 feet of water. Those are all big females. I'm going to set up on them and see if I can't catch some. But you see the land going up here, and that's what you're looking at right over there. That right over there is about 150 to 200 yards away. No more. Maybe, maybe 150. And look, there they are right there. I'm trying to move the camera around. Look at them. There they are, balled up on that tree. There he is. Big female. Big female. Look here, folks. That's a good fish right there. Big old black female coming to you right there. There he is, folks. There, there she is. Oh, look at that rod being. Look at here, big female. Yeah, buddy. This fish here. This fish here. Uh, pound and three quarters easy. I call it a pound and a half. Uh, nice fish. That must be one of y'all right now wanting me. It's Greg. I get a lot of them health insurance calls. 
they don't realize who they're talking to, do they? We're out here on beautiful Lake Sam Raver. How can you help not be? <laughs> there he is. Look here, folks. That fish here just barely hit. Now this one here will go two pounds. You want to see a two pound crappie? Here you go. Oh, man. Let's weigh this crappie just to see. It might not be quite two pounds. Let's see. 198. See that? 198. That's a two pound crappie right there. See, she's full of roll, so she ain't she ain't spawned out yet. Let me sit down here just a minute and take a good look at her. This is a white crappie. She's full of eggs, but she ain't ready yet. We're going to let her go real easy. Come on, baby. There she goes. Big crappie. And those fish I just caught were on that tree right there. So you see them right there? Now, the, the, where are they at? There's 10 foot mark. Some of them are only up here about six, seven feet deep. That in there is about eight feet deep. That, these two here are big crappie. They're just kind of swimming around. What are they doing? They're getting ready. They're getting ready to go to the bank. So sometimes I like to use a road runner. These are eight ounce road runners. They got a little spinner on them. And they're chartreuse. This is a chartreuse. Couldn't find no pink head ones this late day. But this is a chartreuse. But notice I got that same slab buster on here. I like the looks of that. And all we're gonna do is make a cast in front of the boat. There we go. And I'm gonna count it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm just gonna hold my rod down and I'm gonna slow roll it back to the bank and see if we run it through those crop and see if we don't get a hit. There he is right there. Big females, big females. Think about that. Slow rolling a, a road runner right over top of it. Nice female. Springtime on Sam Raber here in the middle of March. These are still pre spawn crappie that we were catching today. You saw me catch a few of them on a little popping cork. That was in about three foot of water. I was fishing about 18 inches, two feet deep. Those were all males. There weren't very many of them up there. So then uh, I decided, well, if they're not up here, I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna look for them. And I went out to the six to 10 feet of water, stumbled out there at around 16 feet and found some trees. And if you remember those crappie were on those trees, but up high, only about six, seven feet below the surface. So uh, I got over the very top of them, went down there with that jig, that great slab buster, pow, I was catching some big females. Then I got the idea, well, why not just uh, pull off of them just a little bit, and with my panoptic set on 70 feet, I can see them from a distance, and instead of spooking them, back off with that, with that road runner, and, uh, which is a little heavier, same body, same slab buster, make a cast, count it down to eight feet and slow row it, bam. We caught several, caught several today, right around two pounds. So three techniques you learned from me today, pre-spawn crappie fishing. I hope you enjoyed the program. Uh, I'm just giving away information free. I got a guest coming, I got four people that's gonna be here in the morning 
and we're going to get rolling track trying to catch these crappie. Looking forward to having you out this season. It's going to be a good one. Crappie are huge here at Lake Sam Rayburn, and there's plenty of them. So uh, until next time, you know, keep your powder dry and your lines wet. This is Greg Finn, and this is Camel River Guide Service. See you, folks. <laughs>